This is the Hit Talk webcast. Our guest today is Marek Maro Valasek, owner of ProMixes.com and a 15-year veteran mix and mastering engineer and producer out of Poland. He's worked with the labels EMI and Def Jam, Method Man, Raekwon, Ghostface. He's also produced some dynamite remixes. Check him out at ProMixes.com. That's P-R-O-M-I-X-E-S.com. Right now, Marek Valasek joins us here at Hit Talk. Welcome. Hi. Okay, so you're involved in some hardware design. Can you tell me a little bit about the BetterMaker? Yes, BetterMaker is an analog EQ with digital recall that combines the best of two worlds. So you have analog circuits with premium high-end sound and possibility to recall the settings just as you would use a plugin. Right, so it's 100% analog signal with digital control. You've taught, presented, and given lectures on mastering and mixing in your country, Poland. What's one of the things amateur producers or home producers frequently do wrong? So, first of all, producers make the beats too hot. And many times, vocalists that receive those beats or instrumentals are simply not able to compensate that loudness that they are getting from the producer. Producers, if they want instrumentals to sound loud, they should prepare two versions. The version that they will present to sell it and the version that they will be sending out to the final customers so the customer can record to lower levels and fit in the vocals in the song if they are sending a two-track. A lot of producers are doing their own recordings at home. What are some of the things they can do to get a really high-quality recording? We are talking about recording vocals mostly because most of the music is made in the box right now. Right. The rule of thumb is the more expensive microphone, the better the sound will be. Of course. Because it's like the weakest chain rule, simply. The weakest so, link rule, right? Yes, the weakest link in, in English. So, first of all, you must secure all the links. The vocalist must be decent, right. uh, first <laughs> of all. Uh, the room must be prepared properly. There should be some acoustic treatment, but if you can't do that, take a blanket, take as many pillows and put behind the vocalist so where the reflections are coming to the microphone. The great microphone is a plus. Most people are using the preamps that are built in the sound cards. For a semi-pro, it's a okay idea, but when you want to go a level higher, you should get a decent preamp. With regard to mastering specifically, is there any advice you have for producers just starting out? The best advice, learn your monitoring environment. This is the most important thing, so just okay. listen to the songs you really, really like and you think the mixes are good, and listen to the faults of those songs, then learn how your room and your monitors sound. So you're listening to those songs in your own monitoring environment and figuring out what your frequency biases are. Do you ever use songs to model mixes after? Yes, of course. Let's say somebody told me he wants to sound like Halo by Beyoncé. I will listen to Halo and compare it and see what were the balances. Uh, There's a simple exercise you can do so you will know your monitors better. If you know EQ bands, where's 500 hertz, where's 1000, where's 2000, when you learn this, because this is an essential thing to use on EQ, you can get a piece of paper, make yourself a playlist of your 10 favorite mixes and just play them and write down what you would EQ for them to sound perfect. Okay. And then when you finish, after that, check your 10 songs and see what EQs are repeating themselves. Then you have the EQ response of your room and your monitors and yourself. I'm sure 100% that you will find five exactly the same EQs on your paper that you would do to different songs. What if somebody's not confident in their ability to judge which frequency bands need to be boosted or reduced by whatever amount? You can go simply to some of the most basic bands and learn them. Make yourself a 125, a 500, a 1000, 2000, 4000, 8000, and then make those boosts on one song. Then randomize on your iPod or something, randomize the fragments that you have boosted the EQ and learn how to recognize what is being boosted on the song. This is the way of learning that. The last thing I'll ask you, what's the best way to get a good mix? What's one of the things that people don't normally think about? First of all, a great mix is coming from a great arrangement. So remember every time if you have a vocalist on the song, to make room for him, because if you have a blurred vocal in your mix, uh, the song is going nowhere. Right, so you've got to to clear out the mix, make sure there aren't any synthesizers competing for the same frequencies. Exactly, and it can be done on the arranging point. You have to make room for the vocals. 
The second thing I would suggest is to listen to your songs on as many monitoring setups as you can. Listen to it in your car, listen to it on your headphones, in your home, at your friend's house, and listen to it in as many places as you can and take an average from it. Any new projects in the works for you right now? I'm currently working on two albums from New York rappers. <laughs> I cannot say exactly till they will be released what it is, but I'm mostly I'm working on mixes from States lately. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks uh, a lot. We'll talk to you later. Cheers. Well, that was Marek Valaszek, owner of Promixes.com, speaking to us from his studio in Poland. For a chance to have your music mastered professionally by Promixes.com, visit Song Submit and find the Promixes.com listing. This has been a Hit Talk webcast. Thank you for listening. Oh.